This is the Digital Music Trends coverage of Medium 2014, a wrap on this year's conference with Emmanuel Legrand. DMT's coverage is brought to you by CI, the leading provider of digital delivery services to the independent community on ci-info.com. So Emmanuel, we're going to uh, have a little bit of a wrap of uh, Medium uh, from your perspective. Uh, and uh, you know, it's, it's been a, a pretty interesting conference. Well, I'm the king of rap and I've got to say. <laughs> okay. I was not expecting that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is excellent. <laughs> I love like the last few interviews, like we start getting loopy, so it's, it's, it's pretty good. And we're uh, sober, by the way. Yes, completely sober. Uh, and so, you know, uh, first of all, what were your general impressions of Medium this year? A uh, mixed feeling, because uh, it seems that it's, it's a difficult year for everyone, so there's uh, probably a bit less people than before. My, uh, the return I get from the people is that actually the business meetings are very good because you have less crap meetings to go through and you really do some business. So I think from that perspective, I think it's quite positive. It would be great if in future growth comes, goes back into the industry and Medem also can grow again and you know, be the, that, that you know, global market that everybody needs. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, there were there were talks today at the at the medium wrap about uh, slight declining numbers. Some territories are going up. Uh, there were a few new countries that joined the fold in terms of pavilions, uh, and uh, so kind of a kind of a mixed bag. You know, in, in a positive outlook, but the numbers uh, having gone down a little bit, uh, that kind of puts a damper on it. But uh, hopefully next year it's going to be it's going to be an increase. Who knows? Uh, I can predict that the sunshine will be there next year, so everybody will be coming. Now I, I don't know. We, we can hope. The uh, you know if if the trends that we've, we're seeing and you know that were confirmed also in France with the figures that, they, that the digital revenues are going up, that the streaming is you know slowly but surely you know getting momentum and also putting money back into the system. Uh, if uh, you have a more uh, say dynamic um, licensing mark uh, business it's also good for everyone yeah. if you have platforms you know maybe beats uh, will come to Europe at some point this year or if not and that might also give a little boost so th there's there's plenty of factors that you know point to the direction that you know actually things could improve yeah Absolutely. So let's talk about the, the, some of the core themes uh, that uh, uh, that uh, swept through Medium this year. So for you, what was the key uh, area of interest? I think for uh, for a lot of people, it's the impact of streaming on the industry, and the revenues that it will bring to the industry, and the sharing of those revenues between the different stakeholders. Yep. And there were lots and lots of discussions about that. And I think the, it's the, uh, you know, Jean-Michel Jarre did a keynote where, you know, it was fair remuneration that was the, the, the title of a keynote, which is not very sexy for, you know, but it is, it is one of the key issues is, you know, how do you pay everyone, you know, fairly and can we achieve scale with streaming services? that will deliver the goods that then could be shared with everyone so I, I think that's that's one of the key uh, you know question marks for the next couple of years yeah sure and uh, there were a lot of representatives from societies this year as well uh, did you did you get any, any feedback on what their feeling is on, on the growth of digital I, I didn't hear much to be honest myself because they managed to attend many discussions on that but it, 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 it's still a paradox because we, if you look at the the, 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 the society that have uh, published their figures for 2013 and uh, to my knowledge there's, there's only one at this stage which is the French society SASM. Uh, digital represents 6% of their revenue so far out of 800 million euros 6% but it's probably 98% uh, of <laughs> all yeah. the activity because of the you know it it it, it it's, it's billions of logs and 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 streams so that has that sh that little piece has to grow and has to become significant but you know and what still works is uh, music played on radio, music played on TV, live music, and so on and so forth. This, are, this is still remaining this, this, the main source of revenues for the societies, but also for the industry. Yeah, and you think uh, uh, you know pe people are catching on to the different potential revenue streams that are around YouTube, uh, especially when it comes to publishing. And so, do you think artists are becoming more aware of uh, uh, you know the importance of registering?
monitoring the works correctly, making sure that they have everything metadata correct so that they can actually claim those those royalties? I'd like to believe it because but at least the word is getting out. Yeah. You know, that you, you cannot claim, oh, I was not aware. Because every place I go to, you know, it could be Medem, could be a, a tech conference and all that. There's you know, people keep on banging, you know, you have to get your, you know, proper metadata because if you don't get proper metadata, you don't get paid because we cannot identify you. You have to do your, you know, and do it properly. It's worth spending the time doing it. And so the message is, you know, if you still haven't got the message, the memo is, you know, you have to register your work and get proper metadata. And I think that's one of the, 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 the key issues. There's also, there's different, I, I really like the fact that um, YouTube, has become a vital part of the, the the ecosystem. If we believe the figures that they was unveiled, I think it was at your panel uh, by Google that you know they've they've put back into the system a billion dollars back to the industry and, and to the rights holders. That's starting to be significant. So now look at that, you know, down the you know in three years time, th that billion could become three billion and so on and so forth. So hopefully and but it is a very small streams which you know goes back to the. Uh, the the criticism that yeah. you know a lot of these services have received is because you know uh, they uh, they not they don't pay enough. I suspect that YouTube is not necessarily paying as much as they should. Uh, they negotiate very well. Uh, they just announced a deal with uh, societies from Southern Europe, you know, Italy, Spain, France, Portugal, uh, the Hungarian society and all that for repertoire covering about six million, you know, works. Uh, we don't get the terms of the deal because there's a non-disclosure agreement. Uh, my understanding is that, you know, the, the, the rates are not that high. But it is important to have those deals in place. Yeah, of course, because otherwise it's lost revenue for the industry. And so, yep. uh, unfortunately, it's kind of that rock and hard place argument that uh, is kind of hard to get past. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with. Uh, did did Gamer sign a deal in the end with YouTube or, or not? Not yet. Yeah. Apparently, my understanding is that it is not yet. But yeah, uh, I heard some rumors that it had been signed, but I don't know if those were. Uh, well, I should have asked directly the, uh, the chief executive of Gamer, but uh, I'll, I'll do it next time. You yeah, know. we're going to have to keep Hold an on, let me call him. You know? <laughs> we're going to have to keep an eye on that. I really hope so, because uh, DMT is still not available in Germany for some s random reasons of uh, my jingle not complying with, uh, <laughs> with the regulations. Uh, but yeah, so, um, and finally, uh, one of the subjects that I think is interesting to talk about is uh, the fact that I've seen so many lawyers and managers here, uh, maybe perhaps not as, as many, as, as much of a frontline label presence. Uh, uh, do you feel like managers and lawyers are becoming uh, re even more important uh, uh, as digital becomes a core part of the business and ancillary revenues as well, brand deals and live become more important? Well, we should ask Lady Gaga how important is a manager. <laughs> uh, for those who are not in the know, she sacked her manager a week before the release of her album last year. And I suspect it was a bit of a mistake. Uh, I think it goes back to uh, really the fact that there is a redistribution of cards in the uh, reshuffling of the cards within the industry and since record labels are not playing the role that they were playing 10 years ago or 15 years ago in terms of financing in terms of marketing in terms of promotion and so on and so forth uh, artists have to look elsewhere and having a good manager or a good lawyer who looks after your interest or who can point you in the direction of the good you know good deals is paramount and you're going to see more and more of these uh, artists you know will become more and more self-sufficient they will use labels as services they will use collecting societies as services and so on and so forth and what they will expect is you know a very high level of service but they will probably not get the kind of checkbook that record labels used to provide in the past and that's money that they will have to go after themselves but if they own their masters if they own their publishing they can make synchronization deals and make more money because they have you know they they own all the rights so it's going to be easier or they mandate someone to do so and uh, to lower it so i think that's that's a sign of the times that's yeah. really a sign of the times yeah, and uh, the independent sector has really grown significantly in the last year i was talking to charles Calders yesterday and uh, talking about uh, the, the how important streaming uh, in independent music is in streaming services and, and, and if that continues to grow, that could, uh, that could be a very interesting shift in the industry. Well, Merlin is uh, as, well, I think something like a 20% growth or something like that in revenues year on year, which really means that independent repertoire 
has a lot of potential, and and a lot of artists turn to you know become independent units. Uh, they create their own companies. They make deals with service companies, and they make you know whatever money they they make goes directly to them. So I think it's it's it. it, it I think it, it, it is probably a better system than before. The only problem is that the, the shrinking of the, the, the markets m means that there's a bit less money available. So you have less money and you have to work harder to get it. I think it's like work hard. That's the bloody word, you know, work <laughs> hard. <laughs> That's definitely a good point to end on. And uh, Emmanuel, it was a pleasure having you on. And where can people find your work? Um, you can go online, uh, Google Le Grand Network, uh, and I've got a blog, and I write extensively about the business. Uh, it's more about giving tips uh, and helping understand the changes in the business rather than ranting about something, which is not my style. <laughs> Yeah, it's not my style either. So I, I'm going to post the links in the show notes as well. Uh, uh, Emmanuel wrote a couple of great blog posts before me them that is worth uh, uh, checking out. Uh, thanks so much for your time. Thank you, Andrea. And looking forward to seeing you in London, where the weather is obviously fantastic. Oh, yeah. Another two months of joy for us. <laughs> and uh, thanks so much for listening to the DMT coverage of Medium 2014. You can find out all the information on DMT on digitalmusictrends.com or youtube.com slash digitalmusictrends.